This video is sponsored by our 30-day diet and habit change program, 1K30. Go to 1K30.com to learn more. Artichoke dip is so good. These are stale. Hi everybody, it's Shalva with Life is No Yolk. I'm like fully caffeinated today and ready to hit the ground running. We are doing three incredibly unique Super Bowl recipes today. These are things that you can bring to a Super Bowl party and people will think are delicious and you don't even have to tell them there's no dairy or meat in them because they are that good. Or if you're hosting and you've got people with dietary needs coming to your party, these are things that your friends will be like, thank you, that was so delicious. So the first thing we're starting with is pulled jackfruit barbecue sliders. I Googled what the top things people eat for Super Bowl are, and sliders was like one of the top, well, chips and guacamole, bring that to your party. But then sliders, and I make a day, damn good, can I say damn on YouTube? I'm gonna say damn good, uh, dang good um, slider made with jackfruit, and it's akin to a pulled pork uh, slider, barbecue style, uh, but you would never even know that it's jackfruit, and they're delicious. So. Some things about jackfruit. Jackfruit might be an ingredient that you're like, I've never heard of that, that sounds weird and scary. I agree. When I first tried it, it was weird and scary. It comes in cans now. You can get cans at most grocery stores. Um, Trader Joe's has them, that's where we usually get them. These are not the Trader Joe's brand. Um, so you'll see young green jackfruit in brine. You can also get like a huge jackfruit and uh, hack at it with a big knife and that works too. We have done that before. It's just so much easier, especially if you're like hosting a bunch of people to get jackfruit in a can. We are going to put this in the oven and sh well, we're gonna shred it and then put it in the oven. So I'm gonna preheat the oven here. Bake 350. And I am going to use the Vitamix to shred my jackfruit. Um, I know my carnivore friends that have um, Vitamixes do use theirs to shred chicken. So we're using the same. That was so gross. That exploded all over me. All right, well, we'll see if young jackfruit uh, juice keeps me young, I guess. Maybe it'll be a miracle um, skincare routine that I just accidentally invented. So I'm just draining the water out and the jackfruit looks like this inside. So if you see a jackfruit out in the wild, it's like a gigantic fruit that has a hard, spiky shell kind of. Um, it's a lot easier when it just comes in a can for me like this. So I am dumping my jackfruit in. I wanna try to not get any of that liquid in there. Dumping my jackfruit in one can at a time. I am going to Put the lid on and use my tamper. You definitely want to use your tamper when you're shredding ingredients um, because it helps kind of control what's going in. And then I'm just gonna pulse. And I have to do it backwards, so I might come over here to do it. Ready? No pulsey. There it goes, okay. That's it. I hit it like two, three times, and now I've got a pulled jackfruit consistency, pulled pork consistency, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. So when I did this with, um, without using the Vitamix, I took a fork and I just kind of like shredded them apart, and that works too, totally works too, but this makes it much easier. I'm gonna grab a pan to throw this on. Hey. So I'm gonna dump that shredded jackfruit. That turned out perfect, look at that. Excellent. And if there's any big chunks in there, I'll just throw them back in, but it doesn't look like there are any. And then I'll do the other can. So jackfruit is one of those things that I feel like you're gonna start seeing on menus in a lot of places. I've already started seeing jackfruit on uh, menus in town here in Minneapolis. 
And so I think, depending on where you're from, Minneapolis is definitely not first on the food scene, but we're pretty woke on, on food topics. Um, you'll probably start seeing jackfruit at some of the restaurants that you go to too as a good meat alternative. It's not just tofu anymore. All right, pulse again. So pulsing, you can go up and down like this. And that's it. Perfect shredded jackfruit. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So, oops, lid cap down. All right. Trying to get all the good jackfruit out there. All right, so you see how that's like pretty shredded pork consistency and it's this is it raw we're gonna look for those like crispy edges like if you go to a barbecue restaurant you're looking for that like burnt tip I think that's what it's called uh, that's what we're trying to get here is kind of that burn tip um, consistency so uh, you can throw your favorite barbecue sauce on now I am using Kansas City style barbecue from Trader Joe's we're big Trader Joe's fans around here. Um, it's the closest grocery store, but it's also, they've got some great stuff. Um, and we like the flavor of this for this particular dish. So I'm gonna get, not a ton, but you can do this with your eyes. You don't have to measure, just make sure everything has a little bit of barbecue on it, mix it up. We're gonna throw this in the oven and Sometimes this takes 20 minutes, sometimes it takes 25, 30 minutes. All we're looking for is crispy edges. Um, you can eat the jackfruit raw, so it doesn't like need to be cooked, but the consistency that we're looking for will be crispy, which is like the parts that everyone fights over basically is what we want the whole thing to be. So I'm putting it on this Silpat mat because it does kind of stick to the pan otherwise. You don't need one of these to make this work. It just makes um, cleanup easier and I'm all about making the cleanup easier. All right, so I'm gonna throw this in the oven and then I'll tell you what we're doing next because it's very exciting. Set a 20 minute timer at 350. 20, go. All right, so the next thing we're doing is for the jackfruit taco or jackfruit sliders, you could serve it just like this, a bun, jackfruit, barbecue jackfruit on top and be done. But if you're feeling extra, and I always am, uh, you can make our cashew queso and put that on top of the slider. And now you've got barbecue jackfruit with cashew queso on top. Or if you're like, I don't have enough time to make sliders, this lady on the internet is crazy, then just make the cashew queso because it's an excellent dip that's like one of our most popular recipes that's been around for like as long as we have. And people ask us to bring it to their houses all the time. So that is a really good one to bring um, if you're hosting or if, if you're going somewhere for Super Bowl. That is one of those dips that like, happens to be dairy free, but like everyone eats it happily. It's not just the people that don't eat dairy that eat it. Everyone loves it. All right, I just rinsed out the jackfruit. Um, I'm not super concerned if there's like one tiny little piece of jackfruit still in there. And now I am going to make our cashew queso. And we make this so often in our house that I can do it by memory. So uh, it starts with a nut milk of your choice. We use almond, one cup. Okay, and then we've got a half a cup of raw almonds. And then a half a cup of raw cashews. Cashews are a pretty expensive ingredient. One trick to buying cashews for less is right now, these are like the cashews that you can buy at most stores 
full two-sided cashews. Those are full price. Uh, some stores sell cashew pieces where you would find like this in a bag. And you would obviously also have pieces like this and stuff in there too. But those are cashew pieces. Those are usually one or $2 less a pound. So that's a good kind of hack for saving money since they're just gonna get uh, blended up anyway in, in the blender. So you're not gonna like see them. Okay, so we've got almond milk, almonds, cashews. The star of the show here is the red pepper. Um, this is what's gonna give it the color of traditional queso, but it's also like super flavorful in a way that is necessary to make it taste cheesy somehow. I know that doesn't really make sense, but it makes sense, you'll see. I've got my compost like right under me in case you guys are wondering why I keep putting like vegetable scraps on the floor. I'm not, there's a compost right here under me. Um, so I'm putting the whole red pepper in. And then the last ingredients are like pantry staple items. So I've got nutritional yeast. If you're making stuff for plant-based people or you are a plant-based person, nutritional yeast is one of those ingredients that you wanna just stock in your pantry. And our um, next recipe, which is our spinach artichoke dip, also uses this stuff. So you will want to buy some for your Super Bowl party. I'm doing a fourth of a cup of nutritional yeast and that is what's gonna give it the cheesy flavor. And then I've got a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Can you use fresh garlic? Of course you can. We're just trying to make it easy and quick for you. Half a, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of some onion based, you can do just onion powder. We use 21 Seasoning Salute. That's what makes ours better than everyone else's. This is the secret. So if you can get your hands on this, you do a full teaspoon of this, full teaspoon of any onion based spice, and then we're gonna do some crushed red pepper. Uh, our kids are gonna eat this, so we do like not that much. If this were just for us, I would have done a, a few more shimmies there. Um, and then salt. We're gonna do a teaspoon and a half of salt, which seems like a lot, but that's, um, the nuts are unsalted in there, so it's gotta be the right flavor. All right. So, I've got my nuts, my spices, my red pepper, my almond milk, my nutritional yeast. That is the magic cashew queso. I am going to blend this on the soup setting. I'm using the A2500 today. Usually we're using the A3500. This blender is like what we recommend as like best for anyone basically. It has the exact same power as the top of the line blender, the A3500 without some of the bells and whistles. It still has some of the bells and whistles, just not everything. So the main difference that you'll see is it doesn't have um, the preset buttons that you push. It, it has three presets on a dial instead. So instead of five presets that you push, it's got three presets on the dial and the presets are smoothie, frozen dessert, soup. So I'm going to use the soup setting and that sets the clock for me at 5.45. So that is the other main difference between the A35 and the A25, which is on the A3500, I can set a clock like it's a microwave and walk away. In this case, I have to choose one of the settings and then I can walk away. But I'm still walking away and I'm still gonna go do a load of laundry while my queso is blending. So it's gonna go for five minutes and 45 seconds and just wait to see the magic when I take the lid off at the end here.
cashew queso is done. It ran through the soup setting. Uh, you might be wondering why I have two Vitamixes. I've got the A3500 behind me on the counter. That's the one that is the one we use every day. That's the one that works best for our family. We do this for a living. We've got the top of the line blender, but like I said, this is what we do for a living. So we've got uh, the A2500 so that we can show it, we can demo it, we can show people how to use it because it is just as good as the one behind us, just with less um, bells and whistles, like I said. So you kind of have to think of us like the people like at a state fair or um, that you see showing and demoing the actual machine. We're just doing it on YouTube instead of at the fair. Um, so this is our famous cashew queso. It is famous because it cooked completely in my blender container right now. So the blade inside of the Vitamix just used friction, just like rubbing together, not only to blend up all the ingredients and make it super smooth, but also to heat it up. So when I take the lid off, you will see, ah, queso facial. Mm -hmm. So it is steamy hot. If you eat it out of the blender, it's like ready to go. You don't need to pour it into a pot and think it, thicken it up. It is ready to go. So that is our cashew queso. If you're hosting a Super Bowl party, you can feel free to serve just this with chips and people will love it but I'm gonna be extra and put it on top of jackfruit tacos. Because everyone I know has already had my cashew queso, so now I have to like amp it up at least one level here. Has anyone noticed that my cutting board is completely warped? I just noticed when I was cleaning it up. If anyone knows how to fix this, can you leave it in the comments below? Because I tried last night and Google failed me. So you tell me, how do I fix this warped cutting board? Thank you. All right. <laughs> I'm going to throw the queso in here and you guys can snack on it while the jackfruit's cooking. See that texture? That's what you want for cashew queso. I also saw, I was reading through the comments on our queso post the other day, and there's people that make that like um, 1990s delicious dip where you add like a can of, what is it, Rotel or something? Or um, You used to use a brick of Velveeta and a can of something, and they use, instead of Velveeta, our queso, and I think that's a great idea. All right, I didn't with the jackfruit, but with the queso, I am gonna run a wash cycle. So all I do is spray down the interior of the container and the mouth of it. Sometimes we hear that people like have trouble cleaning their blenders and they're like, oh, I don't like to use it because I just sits in the sink. Like if you rinse it right after you use it, it's just super easy to clean. And if you run a wash cycle, it's even easier. And if I have time to rinse it with three kids, five and under, you have time to rinse it. I don't care what's going on in your life. All right, throw in some soap. Tiny bit of soap. Rinse out the lid. All right, clean lid. So on the A3500, there is a little icon with bubbles on it that says this is the cleaning cycle. Um, with the A2500, there isn't a, a technical cleaning cycle, but I'm gonna use the smoothie setting, which is just a 50 second timer that goes up to high, and that will do the same thing, basically. Bubbles. See how it hits the top, so that's gonna get clean too.
I definitely helped it along by rinsing the inside like that. If it was just a smoothie, I probably would have just done the water and soap, but because it's queso, which is a little stickier, I like to help it along, but that's it. It's clean. Rinse it. If you wanna go the extra step and really keep your blender container looking nice and you have a minute, you should dry the interior of it because that is really what's gonna keep your container looking like new. Um, I can show you what lazy parents do instead of that and the difference. Now we use this every single day, many times a day, but that's the difference between drying your container and not drying your container. This is not a dirty container, it just has mineral buildup on it from the water that we use that has minerals in it because it's water from the land. So if you dry your container after rinsing it, it won't get that way. Um, even if you use it every day, like we do many times a day, that is the big difference. So if you are into caring for your nice things, which everyone should be, that's how you do that, okay? Cool, lesson number one complete. All right, for some reason there isn't a timer on the jackfruit, but luckily it doesn't really matter because you can't really, I mean, I don't smell burning, so we're good, I, th I would say. So let's go check on the jackfruit. Come with me to the oven, won't you? MTV Cribs. All right, so I'm starting to get some crispy, crispy bits. I'm gonna give it a mix so that some of the undersides get cooked up too. Really what I'm looking for here is texture. Um, I just don't want it to be soggy. So, might actually add some more barbecue sauce while we're at this point. I think that's what I usually do. Stand directly in front of your oven and make sure not to burn yourself. We'll go this way so you guys can see. All right, so you can use as much or as little barbecue sauce as you want. Um, we try not to use too much when we're serving this for like dinner for the kids because barbecue sauce is sneaky sugary, but this is the Super Bowl, so you can use as much as you want. No one is looking for a healthy meal at the Super Bowl. All right, I'm gonna put that in for few more minutes, just keep my eye on it. I'm gonna spread it out so that as much as I can, surface area is like showing so that I get as much crisp as I can on there. All right, back in. So while the jackfruit is finishing up getting that kind of crispy topping, I am going to start um, kind of assembling. So this time I got these pretzel buns. These um, don't have dairy in them. If you do have someone coming to your Super Bowl party that has a dairy allergy, buns are one of those things that have like sneaky dairy in them. So just make sure to check the back. The pretzel ones I know don't. Um, and then there's a handful of other ones that do. The King's Hawaiian rolls sadly do have dairy because those are like the most delicious soft fluffy, but we do love these pretzel rolls. We use these for everything. So I'm gonna load them up on here. And then I made, last night, I made pickled onions. I know that sounds like, oh my God, Shalva, you made pickled onions like that? Who are you? This takes three minutes. It's like the easiest thing and it makes me look like a professional chef. And look at these. They're like beautiful and we keep them in our fridge and you can put them on other stuff. So all you do is chop up a purple onion into small slivers or whatever. What do you call these? I'm gonna call them slivers. Um, rings, you add hot water, a dash of sugar, a dash of salt, and some kind of vinegar. I use red wine vinegar just because I like the color better when I use that. You can use apple cider vinegar, you can use white vinegar. All you do is soak them in that mixture and they can be ready in like a half hour. You can do these on the counter. I put them in the fridge overnight and I like the way that they look better. So these are pickled onions. Those are going on top of my sliders. And then the other thing that can elevate your sliders a little bit is um, doing avocado. Avocados are back in the like you can afford them range hopefully now. We, ha we had to take like a year long break from avocados, but I have noticed them at the store being a little bit more in, in our budget. So 
Lenny thinks that I'm really good at cutting avocados. We'll see if I don't embarrass myself on my warped cutting board look. Um, but my trick is just to cut them in half all the way around first and open them up like this. And then the skin really is attached by this little nub where it's attached to its tree. Avocados grow on trees, right? <laughs> where it's attached to the tree. And the, all you have to do is kind of cut along that. And then the skin becomes a lot easier to peel off. So uh, if you want to take the pit out like a ninja, I just slam into it. I make sure not to hold it. I've seen a lot of people hold it like this and do that. I leave it on the counter and do it. I read somewhere that, um, I read somewhere, I probably saw a TikTok, um, that like the number of hand, small hand cuts that are like need stitches have gone up since the use of avocados in our cuisine have gone up. And I think that's hilarious. So now I can peel from either side and see how easily the skin peels off now. I mean, that's like sushi chef good. I'm so impressed. Okay. And then I'm just going to cut some small slices to put on top of my sliders. Okay. Pretty good. You can always do it thinner, um, but for a sandwich, you want it kind of dense. All right. So I've got... I think I'm not going to toast these for sliders. When we do like burger night at home, when we make Beyond Burgers, we do toast them. But I think with a slider, you want it kind of soft like this. So let's go check on our jackfruit and see if it's ready to go. Oh, yes. It's looking good. I'm going to turn on the broiler for a second just so I can like dramatize, dramatize, dramatize the crispy on a few of those. All right, here we go. All right, you might have seen our jackfruit tacos video or like an Instagram post with our jackfruit sliders. And I almost always make an easy uh, purple, actually it's red cabbage, but it's purple, so that makes no sense. A uh, red cabbage slaw to put on top. It's for pretties, for the pictures, but it also tastes really good. So it's very, very easy. All you do is chop up a cabbage, add some vinegar, add a, a tiny bit of sugar, and add like a vegan mayo. Um, like every brand makes a vegan mayo now, so it's super easy to get. And that's it. And, and stir it up, and it's ready to go. Um, I also use this on our falafel. If you saw last week's video, we made falafel. I make this exact same slaw to put on falafel. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab the jackfruit and we're gonna start building up these sliders. Um, you might need to keep it under the broiler for a few extra minutes to get that crispy topping. Just make sure you're watching it. Um, you want like, you wanna set like two minute timers for it basically. So I've got some really good crispy edges here. These guys are crispy. The sugars in the barbecue sauce are starting to kind of like caramelize on there, which is awesome. Um, so that is what I'm looking for. I'm going to set that here so I don't burn myself. All right. I'm going to throw some jack, not throw. I'm going to gently place some jackfruit on my buns. I think the thing with sliders is that you want them to be like exploding. At least that's how I like mine. All right. So I loaded up the jackfruit. Look at that. You can't tell me that that's not pulled pork once it's got barbecue sauce on it and it's steaming and it's got crispy edges like that just straight up looks like a pulled pork sandwich to me. Okay, so I'm gonna start layering on, I think I'm gonna go queso first. Remember you can serve just the queso, but in this case, we're going topping for the taco. They're not tacos, why do we keep calling them tacos? Sliders, 
I think because we make jackfruit tacos more at home than the sliders. Or we used to. Now I feel like we make the sliders more, actually. All right. Barbecue jackfruit queso. Purple cabbage slaw. Pickled onion. And then your avocado. That is a gorgeous and kind of fancy for Super Bowl <laughs> jackfruit slider. I'll show you. Look at that. Mm. Can you see the jackfruit this angle better? Do you want it to be dripping with queso? Should I put more on? I am actually really excited to try our barbecue jackfruit cashew queso Super Bowl slider. Yum. I'm trying to find like the optimal bite, but each bite on a slider is optimal. Mm. Yum. So many textures. Yeah. Crispy jackfruit, the queso that's like the sauce, creamy avocado, crunchy uh, onion and cabbage. It's like a perfect mouthfeel. I want more. Yum. Yum, 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 yum. The only thing I'd do different next time is I would toast the bun. These are better toasted. Mm. Yum. So those are our jackfruit sliders. The next thing we're gonna make is our spinach artichoke dip, which I would say is our second most requested bring when people invite us to their houses for anything. They're like, can you bring queso? Can you bring spinach artichoke dip? Um, the spinach artichoke dip, you're gonna see, there's like a magic process of making like a stretchy mozzarella cheese without using any dairy, which is really cool. So the queso we made fully in the blender from start to finish. The mozzarella cheese, we're gonna start in the blender and throw it on the stove um, and you'll see the magic happen in a second. So this is our spinach artichoke dip. The base is this stretchy, delicious mozzarella that you could use for anything else really. Um, I think we've used it on pizza before and we made some other dip that it was like the base for and it's very, very yummy. So these are the ingredients. The only ingredients that might throw you off if you're like new to kind of plant-based cooking is the nutritional yeast, which we use for the queso, which you should invest in because you're gonna wanna make queso over and over and over again. I've talked so many people into buying nutritional yeast. I feel like I should be like a nutritional yeast like uh, liaison affiliate. And then the tapioca starch or tapioca flour. This is one of those ingredients that you need to find like in the baking aisle. Most stores have them now. If you can't find it at your local grocery store, like a health food store will have it. It's either tapioca flour or starch. They're interchangeable. And this whole bag was like $4.50. So it's not like a huge commitment, but it does make the magic happen. You can't make it without this ingredient. So we have raw cashews. Again, sorry for those of you that are allergic to cashews. These recipes are not for you today. We've got tons of recipes for you, but no Super Bowl recipes. Three fourths of a cup of cashews. One, two, three. Measure with your heart. Okay. And then two cups of water. And then if you blended that, you'd have cashew milk. Have you guys ever made nut milks in your blender? Because you can. Um, all you would do to make a cashew milk here is add a little sweetener of your choice and you would have a creamy, delicious cashew milk. But I'm not making cashew milk, I'm making mozzarella cheese. So I need seven tablespoons, which is a hilarious measurement. I get a kick out of it every single time. I'm like counting to seven. Okay, like why isn't it just like 
Someone's got to do the math on that. If you can do the math on tablespoons to cups for me, what would seven tablespoons be? Like a half a cup plus one or something? Okay, one, two. This is science, so you do have to be like a little bit precise. Three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so that tapioca flour or starch is the thing that's gonna like hold together um, the cheese. That's the magic ingredient. Nutritional yeast, that's the thing that's gonna make it taste cheesy. Nutritional yeast is one of those things that you can like sprinkle on popcorn. It's like a, just delicious on its own. But it makes me and the kids sneeze when we put it in our queso, when we dump it in, it almost always makes us all sneeze. Nutritional yeast. Okay, apple cider vinegar. Ooh, my warped board. I need two teaspoons. That's a tablespoon, so hang on. So oftentimes if you're kind of making um, dairy substitutes, you'll use apple cider vinegar. You don't really realize it, but like dairy cheese has a, a kind of a sour fermented kick to it. It's not the flavor that like leads, but it is in the background. And so that is just for flavor to make it taste kind of funky, which is like one of the words to describe cheese, funky. All right, a full tablespoon of salt. I know that that seems like a lot, but it is um, cheese after all, and cheese is salty. You could always use less. This is not one of the science ingredients as much as it is a flavor ingredient. And then garlic powder. I'm looking this way to look at my recipe because I don't have this one memorized. We make this one probably three or four times a year. We don't make it like weekly like we do the queso. So one teaspoon of garlic powder. And then we blend. So this recipe, this is the cheese part of our recipe. How long does it tell me to blend for? Dee -dee. If this is my recipe, you tell me. Blend on high for two minutes. So I am going to... All right, so you remember with the queso, when I took the top off, it was steamy and it was done. You served it right from there. With this cheese, it also is a little bit steamy after only two minutes, which is pretty impressive. Um, we are going to put it on the stove to thicken it up because that's what's gonna make it stretchy mozzarella cheese and that's what I need for my uh, spinach artichoke dip. So follow me over to the stove where my delicious jackfruit is also sitting. 
I can have a great Super Bowl party with my double recipes here. All right, so I'm just pouring this into a saucepan. Is that what this is called? Saucepan. I should take a cooking class. Okay. And then we're gonna keep it on low and just keep stirring it until it hits the right consistency, which I'll show you when we get there. So this is one of those kind of finicky uh, recipe, no, rest, uh, steps where you do kind of have to stand guard over it. You can't really walk away and do something else because it can pretty quickly get too, too overcooked and then it becomes kind of gluey and you don't want it to be gluey, you want it to be stretchy. So I can walk away for a second and I'm gonna start chopping my other ingredients. Um, the other ingredients that are gonna go into, into this dip are, gosh, this board is like, am I in danger cutting on this board? The other ingredients are a half an onion, garlic, artichokes, frozen spinach, salt, pepper, and almond milk. This looks like it's got a yucky spot. Okay. Okay. So the onions and stuff I do need to chop finely because they are not getting blended up. They are going in as I cut them. So, wow, I'm doing a really bad job. Pressure of the camera. All right, just want small. Feel free to edit this part out. Jeez Louise. Eyeballs. Oh my god. Okay. I can hear it bubbling, so I'm coming back over here. You can see that it starts to like kind of attach to the side and it's starting to thicken up. So now I definitely can't walk away. Now I gotta stay right here and wait for the science experiment. Looking for a cheesy pulley a party. Think of like a melted mozzarella that like if you got like a really cheesy piece of pizza from like a pub and you took a bite and it was like stretching from your mouth to the to the slice, that's what we're looking for. And it goes fast. I mean we're we're almost there. Can you see how it's thickening up? pretty nicely. I think I might actually turn it off already because I've got other ingredients that I need to throw in. All right, that's perfect. Stretchy. See that? That's like a really unattractive demo of what I'm looking for. Stretchy cheese. Oh yeah, yeah, look. That's what we're looking for. All right, so now bring my cheese. Probably need something to put it on. Do, 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 do. Cheese, all right. And then all we're gonna do is add all these ingredients together now. So I've got almond milk, onions, that's half of a small onion, pick out this weird middle piece, get out of there, okay, 
pepper just to taste. Crushed red to taste. If I were serving this just to adults, I would put quite a bit of crushed red in. I think it's really, really good and it's a little bit spicy. A little more salt to taste. All right, and then I'm cheating and using minced garlic, which I almost always do. It just saves me time. Um, and I need five cloves of garlic, so that is like, like this much, seems right. And then I'm using frozen spinach in this. We've tried it with fresh spinach and it's just not the right like texture. Um, you don't need to thaw it. It can just go in like this because the whole thing's going in the oven anyway. Um, and we use a little bit less water content than we would if we were using fresh because it is going to leak some water into, into the pie dish. And then the last thing is the artichokes, which I've been like not wanting to do because I didn't want to open it on camera. Do you guys know this trick where you smash it against the floor on a corner? My grandma taught me that. Ah! Thanks, grandma. It worked. <laughs> Isn't that magic? You have to hit it at an angle and then it works. So these are pretty big. These are marinated artichokes. Um, in this recipe, we use the marinated ones because it adds a lot of flavor. Our next recipe that we're going to be making is also another like really good Super Bowl dip and that also uses artichokes, but it uses unmarinated ones soaked in water um, because it is mimicking chicken in a buffalo chicken dip. This one, we want to taste the artichoke. The artichoke's the star of the show because it's called spinach artichoke. Cutting artichokes is not my favorite. It's, they get really greasy on your fingers, but they smell so good. So I'm looking for like a cup and a half, which is basically like a third to a half of a giant jar of Costco uh, artichokes or one big jar of all the artichokes that you find at not a giant superstore. All right, so I'm gonna add all of the chopped ingredients into my pie dish, and then I'm gonna pour the cheesy mixture on top. And then it's not gonna look super pretty yet, but trust the process. It's one of those trust the process recipes. Maybe do two more here. I like big chunks of artichokes in mine, but this is up to you how, how small you want to cut them. I like having like a chunk in mine. Okay, so that's going into my pie dish. So I've got almond milk, spices, frozen spinach, marinated artichokes, greasy hands, and then I'm going to put that magic cheesy dip on top here. Sauce, what would you call this? See, it's set a tiny bit more since I took it off, and that's why I took it off just like a minute early because, well, because <laughs> I wanted it to, um, should we do it upside down? Cheesy. This stuff you could eat plain, like Lenny is gonna definitely take a chip to this when I'm done um, because it's really flavorful. I mean, we put the garlic in and it's salty and it's got the apple cider vinegar. It really does taste, here, look at this stretch in here. It really does taste like mozzarella. Um, I think a couple of um, the like vegan dairy brands have started to make a product like this in a bottle that you can put on top of pizzas and stuff. I think Miyoko's makes one and we've tried it and it's pretty good. I actually prefer this one, but you know, always prefer the things that I make myself. Okay, get these greasy artichokes. Greasy is probably not a good word to use on camera, but 
All right, and then this is the only hard part of this whole recipe is like incorporating all of the ingredients in because the cheese is, it's not impenetrable, but impenetrable, impenetrable. Close enough, you know what I'm talking about. But it is, you know, you do have to like fold it in basically. Um, if you do any baking, it's like trying to get um, like raisins into a dough, like that kind of challenge. You have to kind of flop it around to get it in there. So this is gonna cook at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna take it out and stir it because there's like big chunks of spinach and the cheese is gonna be a little bit more pliable in 15 minutes. So we are gonna give it a stir in 15 minutes and then we're gonna get a final finished top on it. But right now it's pretty, pretty rough and ready, but that's okay. Can you tell I watched the British Baking Show last night? Rough and ready is something they say all the time. Um, so that's going in at 400 degrees for 15 minutes. Timer worked this time. Um, so this dip is one of those that um, you don't even need to tell anyone that it doesn't have dairy in it. You just say, here's my spinach artichoke dip. And they'll be like, oh my God, this is so delicious. My mom watches these videos and my mom is an excellent cook. I like, really, I'm not just saying that. She cooks very, very well. And it's how I learned how to cook. But she makes the traditional spinach artichoke dip, which is basically like a can of mayonnaise and then like a handful of spinach and some artichokes. And I think this one is much more elevated, much more delicious. And I'm just remembering now that when um, we lived above a chef for a little bit and we had him try it and he said it was the best spinach artichoke dip he had ever tried. And this guy was not someone that would just like lie to you. Like it really was the best spinach artichoke dip he had ever had because it doesn't taste like mayonnaise. So we're gonna wait 15 minutes, it'll come out. I'm gonna get ready for our buffalo chicken dip next. And then by the end of this video, you're gonna have three amazing Super Bowl recipes to serve to your guests or bring to a party and you'll be the star of the show. All right, I am making a vegan buffalo chicken dip next. And the first step is to soak your cashews. So I wanna get that started while I'm like talking because it's important. So I just boiled hot water and I'm gonna leave it for two, three minutes while I describe the recipe and stuff. And that just helps the blender break it down. It absolutely can do it without the soaking, but it does help. Get yourself a fancy little pour over. It's like a treat yourself gift. I love this thing. Okay. I am making Nora Cook's uh, buffalo dip here. Nora is one of those um, websites that I go to when I'm like, oh, I wanna make a vegan brownie or I wanna make a vegan uh, Alfredo sauce. Like she has everything that I've ever wanted. And so I go there. She sometimes inspires something that I make. Um, and so it's a really good site to go to if you're looking for stuff like this. So we are using Nora Cook's vegan buffalo dip. It is important that when you serve this to your friends and family that you do not call it vegan buffalo dip. I am telling you it's vegan buffalo dip, but you are just going to say this is buffalo dip and people are going to be excited to try it. When you say vegan, people are not excited to eat it. Even if it's the most delicious thing they've put in their mouth that day, there's something about calling it that that makes them unhappy. If you know that one of your friends doesn't eat dairy, you make sure they let, that you let them know, hey, this doesn't have dairy in it. If you have a friend that's a vegetarian, you let them know, hey, there's no real chicken in this. It's, it's really good though. You don't have to tell people that it's vegan. Same with the cashew queso, same with the artichoke dip. You lead with what you made. This is a queso dip I made, yum. This is a spinach artichoke dip, it's so good. Hey, there's no dairy in it. If you don't eat dairy, you don't have to eat this, la, la, la. Right, okay, it's our little secret. So we are making Nora Cook's vegan buffalo dip. Buffalo dip is one of those things that I loved back in the day. And since I became a vegetarian like many, many years ago, I haven't had it because it almost always has chicken in it. So we're making one without chicken and the artichokes are kind of taking the place of chicken. So I have one cup of water. 
I have soaked cashews. I probably didn't talk for three minutes, but I probably talked for like two minutes and that's plenty. So I'm gonna drain the cashews. That's hot. Would not recommend. Okay. I just lost like 30 seconds worth of, <laughs> I mean 30 cents worth of cashews. Okay. I worked at a coffee shop for a long time, so my hands don't feel burned anymore. Don't do what I just did, but do not do it. What is it? What do you say when you don't want someone to do it at home? Do not try this at home. Professionals only. Professional dum-dums. Okay. I need garlic powder. Again, can you use real garlic? Of course you can. We're just making it easy on ourselves and using garlic powder. Two teaspoons. One, two. Okay, I'm using two teaspoons of onion powder. Can you use real onion? Of course you can. We're just making it easy on ourselves. One, two. Oh, check on our artichoke dip. It's ready for a stir. We gotta get a stirrer, also known as a spoon. All right. So remember we cooked it at 400 for 15 minutes. We're gonna pull it out, give it a stir. Oh, that's already looking really good. But you see how there's like clumps of spinach and stuff. So I wanna give it a good stir so that it's all homogeneously. Well, I guess it, it's not homogeneous, but I want it to be evenly distributed the spinach and the artichokes and the cheese evenly distributed throughout. And again, I'm gonna be looking for like kind of a brownish, a browned top to know that it's cooked and it's just aesthetically pleasing when it's got a browned top. So I'm folding the mixture in and you can see that the cheese is more pliable now than it was because that almond milk mixed in and the the liquid from the melted um, spinach mixed in. So now I need to spend another second kind of deciding what I want the final product to look like because I'm not gonna stir it again. So I wanna make sure that it's like pretty on top basically. So if there's a chunk of something you don't like at the top, just make sure it's evenly. All right, so that looks really good to me. So I'm gonna throw it back in for 15 more minutes while I make my buffalo dip. Multitasking. Okay, I know that Nora knows uh, how good a Vitamix is and that it would obviously be able to do a lemon and blend it up, but she says lemon juice, so I'm trusting her and I'm using lemon juice today. Three tablespoons, that's like a lot of lemon juice. I don't even know why we have this in our fridge. I think probably a cocktail. One, two, three. I easily could have used a real lemon in there, but I'm just gonna trust the process on this one. But if I were using real lemon, three tablespoons, I probably would have done half a lemon, no rind. Would have probably been the equivalent of what I just put in there. So I've got cashews, water, lemon juice. I need one and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm gonna run out of salt here. Usually pretty good at stocking the pantry, but ooh, I am running low. All three recipes had salt and cashews in them. Okay, really low. Handful of cracks. That's probably good. Recycle, okay. So, cashews, water, lemon juice, salt, garlic powder, onion powder. And now, I blend until very smooth. Then I'm gonna add the buffalo sauce and the artichokes at the end and pulse them in. So, <clears throat> because I'm using the A2500, I am going to just blend and ramp it up from one to 10 instead of setting a program. So, hello. Oh, you have to tell it. I don't use this one every day. There we go. 
Gotta actually have a number push before you press the start. That looks very smooth. All right, so I've got like a smooth consistency here. So the next step is just putting in, I'm using a cup of buffalo sauce, which should taste pretty buffalo-y if it's got a cup. Um, we're using Sweet Baby Ray's buffalo sauce, uh, but you can use any kind of buffalo sauce. That is one other one that you do need to check the ingredients on if you truly are making a dairy-free dip. A lot of buffalo sauces do have dairy in them. So just check the back to make sure. There's a handful of them that don't. All right, and then I have artichokes in water, different than the artichokes that I had before that were um, in oil. So these are in water and these are gonna take over for the consistency of the like chicken in here. So I'm gonna pour these in and then I'm gonna pulse. Um, I only have one pie dish because I'm in my 30s and I'm not my, at my grandma's house. Um, but I would also probably make this one in a pie dish. I am going to do a hack here where I have these mini pie dishes. So I'm going to make them in these. And it's actually almost preferable for me in my house at least. This is a mild buffalo sauce. If I was gonna make this for my Super Bowl party, which I am, um, I would do a mild, a medium, and a hot. And so in that case, I would blend this now and then wait to add the buffalo sauce to pour them into all three. So I would do one mild, one medium, one hot, and make sure to label them. So I would blend this now, pour those in, and stir in the buffalo. But because I am making all one kind right now, I'm just gonna pour in the buffalo. So. This is when you get to choose how spicy this dip is. So it's up to you. And if you have another pie dish, you can just make one and put it in your pie dish. So now I'm just gonna pulse. Um, and when I'm pulsing, what I'm trying to get is like a shredded chicken consistency like I did with the jackfruit, but this time with artichokes. I think that's pretty good. Let's check it with a spoon. Yeah, so that is kind of the consistency of a traditional um, buffalo chicken dip. Smells really yummy. Um, so I'm just gonna pour it into my pie tins. And again, the only reason I'm using small ones is if I wanted to separate the spicinesses or if I just don't have another pie tin. Looks like I'm gonna be able to make all four, if not more. All right, and that goes into the oven also at 375 and it's gonna cook for um, 20 minutes, I think. So we'll probably put them in with the spinach dip because we like to multitask like that. So we'll throw them in. The spinach dip's up at 400, but can't hurt, right? And because I'm making these in little ones, I'll have to watch it closer anyway on time. So I'm gonna throw all four of those in. All right, I've got spinach artichoke dip almost ready. I've got my buffalo chicken dip in the oven and our jackfruit sliders are already done. So we'll be right back when those come out of the oven and we'll serve them all up and you can see what they look like. Oh yes. Look at that. Don't put it on your couch. Okay, 
So we brought this dip to our New Year's um, plans this year. We put it on like a big, beautiful platter in the center and then did like crusty breads all around and it was very well received. And it was one of those things that like everyone ate and didn't have any questions about. And that's kind of what we're striving for is something that everyone can enjoy and the people that have a dietary restriction also get to enjoy it without having to feel like they're inconveniencing people. Um, if you are the person who is plant-based, this is an awesome thing to bring for yourself because it's filling and delicious and everyone likes it. And it's just something that you can eat and you will feel full after eating. So it's something that we bring to make sure that we have something to eat somewhere else. This can be served with pretzels, crackers, pita chips, pita, uh, baguette, anything that you want to um, stick in some artichoke dip is a welcome. I think hot pita would be very delicious with this, but usually we do crusty like French bread or something. Um, or you could do it with veggies, but you wouldn't do it with veggies for Super Bowl. Uh, I'm gonna try it. All right, so you see there's like big chunks of artichokes in there. That's how I like it. And little pieces of spinach almost everywhere. That's how it should be. It could use a little bit more browning on top if you want to leave it under the broiler for a minute, but it doesn't need it. So good. Salty, cheesy, stretchy, packed full of like the marinated artichoke flavor. It's perfect. No one would ever know that it doesn't have all the mayonnaise. Sorry, mom. In here. I mean, you would know it's not packed full of mayonnaise. It doesn't taste like mayonnaise, but no one would know that it doesn't have any dairy in it. And that's kind of what we're looking for. So that's the spinach artichoke dip. Just gotta wait a couple more minutes for my um, buffalo dip to come out and then we will give that one a try. All right, we grabbed the buffalo dip out of the oven. It is exactly what I remember it looking like, kind of like a crusted top and then you crack through it and you get to the buffalo. I cooked it less time than, um, than the recipe says because I did it in these small dishes. They took about 15, 20 minutes for us. If you did it in a big dish, it'd take about 30. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I already tried it, it's really good, but I'll try it on camera for you also. So that's kind of the consistency. You see that big artichoke kind of looks like a piece of chicken. It's gonna have that mouthfeel of chicken. Um, and it's really flavorful. It's, it tastes like buffalo dip. I got no complaints. This is an excellent Super Bowl dip to bring for your vegetarian friends, for your dairy-free friends, for your vegan friends. This one checks all the boxes. You can make it as spicy as you want. I'm gonna serve it with celery and carrots and like pita chips. Um, it would be good on tortilla chips. It would be good on crackers, all those things. Really good. Let's go talk about all three of these recipes and why they're awesome at my kitchen table. We are here with all three of our Super Bowl recipes that you should bring to your friend's party or you should have at your house if you're hosting. We've got barbecue, jackfruit, queso topped sliders. Need a better name for those. Delicious, small bun slider thing. We've got our spinach artichoke dip and then we've got the buffalo dip that has uh, artichokes instead of chicken. All three of these recipes can be made pretty simply. You can like go above and beyond with toppings and sides and all of that. But these are all three a very good spread to serve to your guests. Or if you just need to bring one thing, pick one of these and bring it to the party that you're going to. Um, depending on what you have been tasked with bringing, these two dips are great. If you're in charge of bringing like a main dish, these are awesome. Um, and thanks for joining us for making all three of these plant-based Super Bowl recipes using a Vitamix. Um, I think that sums it up kind of, but if you guys like videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel for sure. But then also 
tell us what we should do next so that we don't have to think of it ourselves, but also because we want to make what you're looking for. So in the comments below, let us know. Uh, we've done juices, we've done soups, we did Super Bowl, we did uh, Middle Eastern recipes last week. So let us know what you want to see next and we'll get it on our calendar to make for you. Uh, thanks so much for joining us uh, and we'll see you next time. Bye.